This is expat stacker coming to you all the way from South Korea. That was Aquaman by Korean artist Benzino. And we are all Aquaman and Aqua women as there is an unprecedented level of liquidity in the markets just now. Nevertheless, I am happy to be with you once again. A quick note to start today's show, this show, as well as my other podcast style show that I do called the Silvercast with fellow YouTuber Silver Conundrum is now available on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and various other platforms, as well as on YouTube. So check the links in the description. You can now tune in and support the show while you're on the go or wherever you are. Please leave a positive review if you like the show and rate the show wherever you listen in from. Now, let's get you filled in with some of this past week's events in the seventh weekly restack show. If you're a returning listener, then welcome back. And if this is your first time joining, welcome. Please like, share, and subscribe. In this show, I summarize and review the news of the past week in the following format. First, we do a quick five minute market recap of financial markets. Then we do a five to 10 minute finance slash bullion related news segment. After that, we move on to a few minutes of world news and current events. And we finish off the show with stacking community news and notes. I can't cover all the news, but I try to get to as much as I can. My only objective is to help keep you and anyone else who wants to listen as informed as possible. I try to be as neutral and as impartial as I can, although nothing is ever truly 100% impartial. I aim to give you the facts and information and it's up to you to decide what you think about it. Please leave your thoughts, comments, criticisms, feedback, suggestions, questions in the comments section. So without further ado, let's get into this past week's news. In the metals markets, gold closed the week at $1,698.64 an ounce as it continues to drop below its 200-day moving average of $1,874.40 an ounce. Gold is down about $35 an ounce since last week and continues to move away from its 2021 high of $1,960 per ounce. Silver slipped a bit again this week, finishing off at $25.20 Per ounce, but it's above its 200 day moving average of $24.28 per ounce and is about $5 off its 2021 high of nearly $30 per ounce. Platinum slipped a little bit as well this week at $1,127, down nearly $60 an ounce since last week. Platinum is well above its 200-day moving average of $955.81 per ounce, but it too is off its 2021 high of nearly $1,300 an ounce. Copper gained slightly this week and finished at $4.11 per pound, which is up about $0.02 cents since last week. Copper continues to hold above $4 for now and well above its 200-day moving average of $3.16 per pound. Oil jumped again this week and finished the week off at $65.97 per barrel. That's up about $4 per barrel from last week as OPEC continues on with production cuts and an uptick in industrial demand data and expectations. Bitcoin has been mostly range bound this week, but is up heading into the weekend, currently around $49,000. Ethereum also ticked up this week and is currently around $1,534.90. 
major Wall Street indices, the Dow, the S&P 500, and NASDAQ all had a very tumultuous and eventful week this week, but rallied late in the week to parry huge losses, with the Dow finishing at 0.23%. S&P 500 at minus 0.74% and NASDAQ suffering the worst among the big three indices at minus 3.65%. Asia Pacific markets mostly followed Wall Street's downward trend. The KOSPI in South Korea finished the week nearly unchanged up just 0.07% with Japan's Nikkei dropping by two and a quarter percent. European markets finish mostly down this week. The US dollar gained again this week and rising US bond yields since last week have mostly held. The US dollar gained by about 1.33% this week and finished the week at the 91.988 handle. Investors around the world remain on edge and uncertain as progress toward reopening the global economy is being offset by central bank monetary policy concerns and ongoing political hurdles and problems around the world, which are commanding immediate attention. Financial analysts still seem to be expecting price inflation, but the data coming out of many financial asset classes is sending mixed signals to investors, as many of the circumstances populations are facing are unprecedented. Let's now turn to precious metals and finance related news. US Census data for America's annual net gold import export numbers show that 2020 was the first time in 24 years that the US became a net importer of gold. Spanning back to 1996, the US has been a net exporter of gold. As previously reported on this show, U.S. Mint gold bullion sales reached an all-time monthly record in January 2021 of 220,500 ounces in a single month. However, the U.S. Mint sales of American Gold Eagle and Gold Buffalo bullion coins slowed in February as expected. Despite being lower than the previous month, gold sales for 2021 are notably higher than a year ago. Let's compare some of the data. American Eagle Gold coins increased by 125,500 ounces in February 2021, which is down 43.1% from sales of January 2021. However, February is 1,692.9% higher than the sales of 7,000 ounces of American Gold Eagle in February 2020. For the year so far, American Gold Eagle sales are at 346,000 ounces, which is 416.2% higher than the 67,000 ounces delivered during the first two months of 2020. American Eagle silver coins rose this month by 3,191,500 ounces, which is down 33.2% from the sales of 4.7 million ounces in January, but 391% higher than sales of 650,000 ounces in February of 2020. American Eagle sales so far this year are at 7,966,500, which is 77.2% higher than the 4,496,000 ounces of coin sold through the same period in 2020. American Buffalo Gold Coins advanced 16,000 ounces in February, down 74% from sales of 61,500 ounces in January 2021, but it is 1,500% higher than the sales of 1,000 ounces in February 2020. American Gold Buffalo sales for the year so far are 77,500 ounces, which is 252.3% higher than the 22,000 ounces delivered during the first two months of 2020. Transparent gold holdings ticked down slightly this week, just under 1.5 million ounces, while silver ticked up slightly by 
2.7 million ounces. China's central bank, the PBOC, has issued millions more in an expansion of its central bank-backed digital currency, or CBDC, the digital yuan, which is cause for concern for many cryptocurrency investors as it casts massive uncertainty and concern in one of Bitcoin's biggest markets. While the Bahamas has become the first nation to issue a CBDC, the sand dollar, which is also pegged to the US dollar, China is expected to be among the first major nations to issue a CBDC. The eventual rollout of the virtual yuan could cause upheaval in global cryptocurrency markets if Chinese officials tighten regulations at the same time, according to Philip Gillespie, former Goldman Sachs foreign currency officer and current chief executive of crypto market maker and liquidity provider B2C2 Japan, which mainly works with institutional investors. Philip Gillespie spoke with Bloomberg News about the issue. According to Gillespie, once a digital yuan is introduced, that's going to be one of the biggest risks in crypto. Panic selling is possible if the new rules end up sucking liquidity from trading platforms for digital coins, he said. The power of central banks around the world to issue virtual money and prescribe rivals is one of the key risks for the crypto sector. Chinese citizens are already banned from converting yuan to many cryptocurrencies, but many of them use a loophole in the system with the cryptocurrency Tether. Tether is a digital coin that claims to be a stable value because it's reportedly pegged to the US dollar. Chinese citizens first use their money to acquire Tether and then use Tether to acquire Bitcoin and other digital tokens. Tokyo-based Gillespie sees potential for an outright ban on Tether, which could raise the stakes for anyone minded to continue using it. A draft of the People's Bank of China law setting the stage for a virtual yuan, including a provision prohibiting individuals and entities from making and selling cryptocurrencies, is now believed to be in existence. In recent days, the regional government in China's underdeveloped Inner Mongolia region banned the practice of cryptocurrency mining because of the demand it places on the electrical grid. Representatives of the People's Bank of China didn't reply to inquiries seeking a comment on the prospect of regulatory changes related to cryptocurrency or digital currency. Tether officials have downplayed the concern saying that central bank digital currencies won't mean the end of stable coins. Now let's move on to general news and current events. U.S. President Joe Biden's $1.9 billion stimulus package has stalled in the U.S. Senate. After passing the House, eight Democratic senators joined Senate Republicans to pass Biden's COVID relief package, but voted down even the possibility of holding a vote on the proposed five-year phase-in of a federal $15 minimum wage increase. The Senate version of this bill will now return to the House of Representatives who can either vote to pass the Senate version or vote the Senate version down until $15 minimum wage is reinstated into the bill. The $15 minimum wage increase would take place over a five-year period and was a key campaign promise of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The U.S. federal minimum wage was last raised on July 24, 2009 when it rose from $6.55 to $7.25 per hour, the last step of a three-step increase approved by Congress in 2007. Before 2007, the minimum wage had been stuck at $5.15 per hour for 10 years. Thus, since 1997, the minimum wage has only increased $2.10, which is a 41% increase in the past 24 years. Over the same period of time since 1997, inflation in the U.S. has increased by 63%. Thus, inflation has outpaced the minimum wage by 22% over that period of time and is reflected in the decreased purchasing power of low-wage earners in the United States, losing nearly a quarter of their purchasing power. 
Governor of the U.S. state of New York, Andrew Cuomo, has been stripped by the state legislature of emergency powers granted to him during the pandemic over mounting allegations of sexual harassment. Andrew Cuomo has yet to make an appearance, as he regularly has in the past, on his little brother's CNN TV show. China's top lawmaking body, the National People's Congress, the NPC, has planned to overhaul the election system in the semi-autonomous region of Hong Kong. At the NPC's annual gathering this past Friday, Beijing unveiled plans to ensure that only, quote, patriots can govern Hong Kong and warned the world not to interfere. This move follows the recent imposition of the controversial security law and critics of Beijing warn that the Communist Party is working to eliminate the one country, two systems arrangement that China made with the United Kingdom as a condition of the 1997 handover. The agreement ensures that Hong Kong is allowed to keep free and fair elections and free press. Former governor of Hong Kong, Lord Chris Patton, says these changes are crushing democracy in Hong Kong. Pope Francis is holding a symbolic meeting with one of the most powerful figures in Shia Islam on the second day of the Pope's visit to Iraq. The landmark meeting with Grand Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani who is the spiritual leader to millions of Shia Muslims, is taking place in the holy city of Najaf. Pope Francis is the first ever to visit Iraq. The two spiritual leaders are set to discuss interfaith issues, including an end to extremism, an end to factionalism, an end to violence in the name of religion, religious intolerance, and interfaith cooperation. The Pope has voiced concerns on Iraq's dwindling yet once prominent Christian population, stating, quote, the age-old presence of Christians in this land and their contributions to the life of the nation constitute a rich heritage that they wish to continue to place at the service of all, end quote. He went on to state that the Christians should have more prominent roles as citizens with full rights, freedoms, and responsibilities as their Muslim neighbors in Iraq. 10,000 Iraqi security forces have been deployed to protect the Pope, and a round-the-clock curfew is also in place. Some radical Islamic Shia groups have reportedly opposed the Pope's visit, calling it an interference in internal Islamic matters. A two-star general in South Korea in command of the 22nd Infantry Division who is in charge of protecting the east coast of the Republic of Korea has been relieved of duty after soldiers under his command failed to notice a border crossing of a North Korean citizen after he swam across the maritime border. The North Korean citizen was apprehended hours later and expressed a desire to defect from the DPRK to the Republic of Korea. Following an investigation, the defense ministry commented that the commander in charge of the division had been stripped of his command and that it will take disciplinary measures against other senior officers who are deemed responsible for the lack of security. Furthermore, Army Chief of Staff General Nam Yong Shin stated that the Republic of Korea's 8th Army Corps, which has the 22nd Infantry Division under its wing, will intensively push forward with fundamental and supplementary measures and make a strong effort to fulfill its mission and regain public trust in securing the borders of the nation. U.S. unemployment fell to a better than expected 6.2% in February, but this figure does not account for the over 4 million Americans who have dropped out of the labor force and are no longer actively seeking work. The military junta who sees control of the nation of Myanmar recently has reportedly violently cracked down on protesters across the country, shut down international communication access, and is taking strict authoritarian measures to cement its control and stamp out any dissent in the country. Now let's move on to community news and notes. The Wall Street Silver subreddit has nearly 40,000 members in just about a month of existence and has received over $53,000 in donations to a GoFundMe campaign which was set up to purchase billboards around the U.S. and other countries to encourage people to invest in physical silver as well as viral online ad campaigns and other efforts to raise retail investor awareness about silver. 
As previously mentioned at the top of the show, this podcast, as well as the Silvercast, a joint show which I do with Silver Conundrum, is available in podcast format on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and others. So check the link in the description and you can listen to this episode as well as a backlog of episodes on the go. As you know, if you've been listening in, I do a three week on one week off rotation. So I was planning to take next week off. However, I will be making another episode next week and taking the following week off. I would like to give a big shout out again to Persian Stacker. You need to go check out his excellent content and subscribe to his channel. This episode was brought to you by Salivate Metals Coffee. It is made with a blend of roasted Arabica coffee beans and silver shot. Salivate Metals Coffee. If you don't hold it, you can't slurp it. <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Leave your thoughts in the comment section and I'll catch you all